Hello there, everyone, and welcome to worship on this Reformation weekend. Yep, October 31st. Happy Halloween, by the way. But also, it's the day that we remember Martin Luther strolling up to his church there in Wittenberg, Germany, and nailing the 95 Theses to that door. Yeah, we don't dare do that on our door because we'll get in trouble doing that. But that was the bulletin board for the community and for the church. And there he started a revolution, a revolution within the church. And it kind of got political too, outside of the church. But it was a time to reevaluate what we were doing as God's people, as Christians, and seeing that we needed to change things, change things so that the love of Jesus would truly come out in our lives and in the world around us. Kind of got a little messed up there for a while, and it still does. We are people who are sinful, we make mistakes, so as a church, we need to continually look around and see what is it that we can do to let the love of God flow through our lives into the lives of those around us. So on this October 31st, let's join together in a word of prayer. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for this day comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. That's right. The time is coming when I will make a brand new covenant with Israel and Judah. It won't be a repeat of the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant even though I did my part as their master. God's decree. This is the brand new covenant that I will make with Israel when the time comes. I will put my law within them, write it on their hearts, and be their God. And they will be my people. They will no longer go around setting up schools to teach each other about God. They'll know me firsthand, the dull and the bright, the smart and the slow. I'll wipe the slate clean for each of them. I'll forget they ever sinned. God's decree. Our second lesson is from the third chapter of the book of Romans. So where does that put us? Do we Jews get a better break than the others? Not really. Basically all of us, whether insiders or outsiders, start out in identical conditions, which is to say that we all start out as sinners. Scripture leaves no doubt about it. There's nobody living right, not even one. Nobody who knows the score, nobody alert for God. They've all taken the wrong turn. They've all wandered down blind alleys. No one's living right. I can't find a single one. Their throats are gaping graves. Their tongues slick as mudslides. Every word they speak is tinged with poison. They open their mouths and pollute the air. They race for the honor of sinner of the year. Litter the land with heartbreak and ruin. Don't know the first thing about living with others they never give God the time of day. Well, this makes it clear, doesn't it, that whatever is written in these scriptures is not what God says about others, but to us, to whom these scriptures were addressed in the first place. And it's clear enough, isn't it, that we're sinners, every one of us, in the same sinking boat with everybody else. Our involvement with God's revelation doesn't put us right with God, what it does is force us to face our complicity in everyone else's sin. But in our time, something new has been added. What Moses and the prophets witnessed to all those years has happened. The God setting things right that we read about has become Jesus setting things right for us. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes in him. 
There is no difference between us and them in this, since we've compiled this long and sorry record as sinners, both us and them, and prove that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us, God did it for us. Out of sheer generosity, he put us in right standing with himself, a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we're in and restored us to where he has always wanted us to be. And he did it by means of Jesus Christ. God sacrificed Jesus on the altar of the world to clear that world of sin. Having faith in him sets us in the clear. God decided on this course of action in full view of the public to set the world in the clear with himself through the sacrifice of Jesus, finally taking care of the sins he had so patiently endured. This is not only clear, but it's now. This is current history. God sets things right. He also makes it possible for us to live in his righteousness. So where does that leave our proud Jewish insider claims and counterclaims? Canceled? Yes, canceled. What we've learned is this. God does not respond to what we do. We respond to what God does. We've finally figured it out. Our lives get in step with God and all others by letting him set the pace, not by proudly or anxiously trying to run the parade. And our gospel reading is from the eighth chapter of John. Then Jesus turned to the Jews who had claimed to believe in him. If you stick with this, he said, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourselves the truth and the truth will free you. Surprised, they said, but we're descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. How can you say the truth will free you? Jesus said, I'll tell you most solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead end life and is in fact a slave. A slave is a transient who can't come and go at will. The son though has an established position, the run of the house. So if the son sets you free, you are free through and through. I know that you're Abraham's descendants, but I also know that you are trying to kill me because my message hasn't yet penetrated your thick skulls. I'm talking about things I have seen while keeping company with the father and you just go on doing what you have heard from your father. The gospel of the Lord. Wow, we have three very, very potent and powerful lessons that we just read. Three lessons that help us to, to pull together what it means on this Reformation Sunday that we as people continually are changed, that we continually conform to the image of God. You see, I think the big mistake that we make as God's people is that, oh, we come to church, we're baptized, some of us have been confirmed, uh, we've been members of the church, we've been on council, we've taught Sundays, we've done it all. So, you know what? God's gonna be good to me. And yeah, I know, stashed in my back pocket is that ticket to heaven. Oh my, I think Martin Luther be turning over in his grave right now if he realized that's what we're celebrating on this day. That's not what we're celebrating. We are celebrating God's love making a difference in our lives. Not what we've done, but what he has done for us. What God has done for us. How God has taken us as messed up as we can possibly get as people and changed us from the inside out. So we can put on all the trappings and do all what we think are the right things. And hey, that's well and fine. And it may even make the world a better place to live. But if we do it for the wrong reasons and we're not doing it from our hearts, well, 
we're still messed up. We haven't truly been freed. That's why God said in this passage from Jeremiah, speaking to the prophet Jeremiah, he's going to do a new thing. He's going to write his law. Now, that's not his law that, oh, man, these are commandments you have to, to follow or, boy, you're in big trouble. No, the law means his teachings. He's writing all those things that were down in black and white writing for us. Now he's writing those right on our hearts so that we know the way, truly know the way from the inside out. And we allow that to literally explode into the world. And it can, and it will make a difference for you and for me. When we talk about the Reformation back there in 1517, things were pretty messed up. People did get the wrong idea that, you know, this whole thing about, about Jesus and going to heaven and, and gaining his forgiveness, well, that's something we really have to work at. No, Martin Luther looks at what we read from the Apostle Paul and said, that's not what, it, we don't have to do any of that stuff. God does it for us. We just have to allow it to happen in our lives. Open up our hearts so that God can write that, write on our hearts and our hearts meaning within our very selves our the essence of who we are so that we open up and we look at the world through the eyes of God we look at the world in love with caring with compassion we do what Jesus did we become his disciples you will know the truth Jesus said and that truth will set you free. Well, what is that truth? That truth is that God provides the way for you and for me to live the kind of life that is kingdom life, that is kingdom living. It is caring for those who are down and out. It is lifting up the downtrodden. It is showing others that there is a reason to live. There's a reason to live a life that's full and abundant. And it's just awesomeness. We can do it. Even in the midst of terrible times, in the midst of trials, Jeremiah, when he's writing his prophecies and sharing it with the people, God's words with the people, they're going through a messy time. This is the time of Babylonians coming in and taking over the land and deporting us back to their land and, and leaving some behind to live in absolute ruin. How are these words of hope? They're words of hope because, behold, the days are coming when he's going to do a new thing. Because, you see, we, we cause our own problems. We do all these bad things to ourselves. It's not like God's zapping us, no. It's, it's really on us. We've wandered off. God had made his covenant with Abraham and even with Moses. And in fact, if you look in the Old Testament, time and time again, the covenant's being renewed. But the people keep messing up. We keep messing up. Now it's time to let Jesus take over. That's what the apostle Paul is saying. That's what Martin Luther had to discover for himself. And that's what Martin Luther teaches through the Reformation, that we let God be God and let Jesus shine in our lives. Let his love be written right there in our hearts so that we can live that kind of faith. And then we will recognize those words of Jesus that we are now freed, freed up, to live like he wants us to live, freed up to feel his love, freed up to share his love. So on this Reformation Sunday, let's not celebrate the fact that, oh man, the church was so bad that we had to set things right because as Lutherans, we're no better than anyone else. We're all, as Paul said, in the same boat, we all need God's love and God's grace to fill us to the brim. And when we let that happen, then we've discovered that truth, and that truth does set us free. Amen.
set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you, guide teaching and learning and confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. God's blessings be with you on this day, this Reformation Sunday. And just remember this. Don't fall into, the, into that awful, horrible temptation of reaching into your child's or your grandchild's Halloween treat basket and taking out all of the peanut M&Ms for yourself. God's blessings be with you.